Good evening. This is Team 11's final presentation. This slide outlines our contributions. We all worked on the projects together. The names listed were the main contributors, but it should be noted that Mahaba did not work on anything. Uh, for our PCB design, the top layer was used for most of our connections. There was a dedicated layer for V positive and V negative, as well as a dedicated layer for ground. And then our last layer was used in case we had to cross traces anywhere. And the bypass capacitor is replaced as close to the ICs as possible. After ordering the board, um, we had to order the various components from the IC chips to the resistors and capacitors on the actual board. We first had to find these values. So we built the circuit in a MATLAB simulation and we played around with the um, component values until we reached the desired output for the current sensor of zero to three volts and for the output for the voltage sensor from negative three to positive three volts. Um, the values were the basic values, so we started with 8,000 ohms for most of the resistors, and then the two values for the resistors that were changed with the voltage dividers, where we changed them to 100K and 10K, doing a 10 to 1 ratio for the voltage divider. After that, we ordered the parts on DigiKey. We used the footprints of 0805, which were given to us for the resistors and capacitors. The IC chips had the eight soy um, footprint, and we had to order extra parts to be on the safe side. Simulink programming um, for closed loop and open loop control, as well as, as connecting the microcontroller to the console, as well as integrating it with the PCB console and the microcontroller. The first thing we did was test our PCB by connecting up a function generator and uh, connecting plus or minus five volts in ground to the board. And then we set an oscilloscope probe to the voltage sensor first, which is on that blue wire. To do current sensor next, we just moved the oscilloscope probe to this uh, top wire over here. And what we got was what we expected, what our, what our function generator was producing was coming through um, to our board. So we knew all, all our paths were correct. So we didn't have to actually check resistors or capacitors or anything. We knew that there was valid path, no shorts, something like that, which let us move on to actually messing with the console. Um, we pro next, we actually programmed the microcontroller. And this is already uh, made. We already made this in 5.1, 5.2, really. Um, but basically what's happening here is that first we have some LEDs just to let us know the board is connected. Then we have an ADC block, which configures our microcontroller. Um, it's on pin 29 where we set it, um, which is nice that this is done in a GUI, so you don't have to program anything um, like you would do maybe like an embedded systems class. Uh, over here, we have a constant block that has to match the average of this display block. You kind of just eyeball it, look at what you get. Then you adjust your second gain until your moving average is between zero and one. Uh, then this runs into a, a PI control box and we, through trial and error, we found that the KP was equal to 0 0.5 and KI was equal to zero. Uh, then from there, it produced, went to the output and we see that um, we first uh, put, right before we plug this in, we put an oscilloscope probe to the current sensor and made sure we were actually reading um, uh, values from it that we had expected. And again, we have plus or minus five volts connected and we have some rails connected to the board as well. Um, not the function generator, it's just a DC power supply. Then the very next step, once this was working, we just connected the ADC pin 29 to the current sensor and we're able to actually get our results. So in the Simulink model, uh, it's right over here. We have an I reference and the current reference uh, was set as one to begin with. And we can see it on the right-hand side and we adjust it to 1.2. On our left-hand side, we can see that we are getting that sine wave that we'd expect. And we are getting that five volts peak to peak, which we wanted. Now, the one funny thing is our BDD was 3.3. We had designed it thinking our BDD would be 20 volts, but it looks like there was an error either in our calculations or an error in maybe we put more likely, maybe more likely we had maybe placed the wrong resistor value, um, which caused our voltage uh, to, to be scaled rather than scaled up rather than to be scaled down. So instead of going from 20 volts to five volts, we actually had to adjust it. So we'd go from 3.3 volts to five volts. But other than that, 
the circuit worked well in every aspect. Um, it, it actually still works, just you just had to adjust BDD. Thank you.